Grace, mercy, and peace be to you from God our Father, from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Uh, amen. Uh, this is the last uh, of this little series, Turning Point. Uh, the springboard has been this idea that we have forks in the road in our lives. We have these, these turning points, and, and we can look back, and we can say, uh, uh, boy, I made a good choice there, and, and good things happen, or not such a good choice, and bad things happened. Uh, 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 but, but we have these, these turning points in our lives. The neat thing, of course, is for uh, Christians, you can look back and say, I fouled that up, but it's covered by the grace of God, right, in Jesus Christ. So, I mean, we, we can look back and we can say, yeah, I should have done better, but you know what, that's covered with Jesus as well. But we have these turning points in life, and if we can look back at them, then certainly we can say we're going to continue to have those turning points in our lives, right? We're going to have those forks in the road. We're going to have those times of decisions in our lives. Uh, and, and what we're doing in this series is, is we're looking at Jesus as our example in some of the major turning points in our lives, right? Uh, and and uh, I never tire of saying this, but, but I think it's important. We always look at Jesus as the suffering servant, as one who suffered and died on the cross for the forgiveness of our sins. We always see him as the king of kings and lord of lords, right? The, the, the snapshot we have in heaven of the angels, uh, the choir of angels and, and the saints, uh, worthy is the lamb who was slain and he's sitting on the throne, right? The king of kings. Uh, but we can also look at him uh, as our guide, as our example. And that's, uh, we're really focusing on that. Uh, this his, uh, the cross and the king of kings, that's the, the, the power to allow him to be our guide. It's, it's the mitochondria of our life as, 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 as Christians, right? The power source of our lives here. Uh, uh, and, yet, and yet this is Jesus' guide and that, that's what we're especially focusing on. Today, uh, when he could have turned away, he embraces the road of suffering. When he could have turned away, and this is an example for us. Ooh, do you want to leave now? Just, anyway, okay, so th this is the example. When he could have turned away, he embraces the road of suffering. It's Palm Sunday. We're going to start with, with a short film clip. This is one of the disciples who, um, who, who procured the donkey for him, okay? Okay, let me get this out of the way. I didn't steal that donkey, okay? I, I borrowed it. And, and it wasn't even my idea. Jesus told me to take it, to, to, to borrow it, right? Um, okay, this is, this is how it happened. Um, earlier today, there was a large group of us, and we were traveling from Bethany to Jerusalem. We stopped just outside the city, and Jesus looked at two of us, and he said there was an unridden donkey just inside the village and asked us to go get it. He said, if anybody, you know, ask us about it, we could just look at him and say, the Lord needs it and he'll send it back. So the two of us beat it into town. And the whole time we were like, what is Jesus going to do with a donkey, right? But by this point, we realized you don't second guess Jesus, right? He hadn't told us why and we didn't ask. We just got him a donkey. And when we got back, <laughs> that's... Uh, that's when it, uh, that's when it happened. Um, some people put their coats on the donkey and Jesus got on the donkey and, um, <laughs> when he got on the donkey, <sighs> I don't know, it's like, um, everyone started shouting and dancing and singing and um, some people were throwing their coats in front of the donkey. There, there was, there was a, some of us that grabbed some palm branches and we started waving them in the air. And that's when it clicked. Jesus had finally arrived. Um, I know that sounds weird. That's, it, no, it's, it's like this. Um, in the past, we would get excited because Jesus would do something, a miracle, or he, there would be some parable or something he said. We'd get excited about it. And Jesus would always be like, shh, come on, guys. No, 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 nope. Just be quiet, you know? And then we'd come up with some idea. Hey, let's do this or let's do that. And Jesus would, would be like, no, guys, no, not, not now, not now. But today, <laughs> today was now. Today, he finally let us shout and sing and dance and treat him 
like the Messiah that we'd all been waiting for. He finally showed up. <laughs> ah, I don't know. Um, I don't know what tomorrow holds. Um, it feels like it's something big, but who knows, you know? But it doesn't matter what happens because Jesus showed up. And there, <laughs> there's nothing better than when Jesus shows up. <laughs>catch that line? Come put that up for me, Vicky. Did, did, did you catch that line? Jesus finally showed up. There's nothing better than when Jesus shows up. Did you catch that? I'd kind of like you to take that one home. You see, the, the Jesus had, had kept himself somewhat hidden in his ministry. Uh, when the disciples came down from the Mount of Transfiguration, Peter, James, and John, he said, just keep this quiet till after the resurrection, right? There were other times when he said to people, don't, don't tell anyone what I've done for you, right? Just, just go about your business, don't, don't tell anyone. He, he kept things quiet, he kept things under wrap because the, the, uh, the people, the general populace and the disciples were looking for an earthly king, right? They were looking for a breadwinner, so to speak. We, we kind of see that with the feeding of the 5,000 when they wanted to make him a king. And he kept it, he kept it quiet. Um, but Palm Sunday is the time uh, when he reveals himself as the King of Kings. So I, I don't know how many of you uh, uh, watched Lord of the Rings. Uh, it's it's a, 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 a triple movie, right? But, but in there, there's this uh, guy named Gandalf, and, and he's a, a, a magician who has come through death back to life, and he was Gandalf the Grey, uh, and he's got these shattered clothes on, these gray clothes, and he, he meets the bad guy, Saruman, face to face, and Saruman starts to laugh at him. Why do I have to be afraid of you, Gandalf the Grey? And, and he whips off his clothes, and he's white as bright as light, right? And he says, I'm now Gandalf the White, and Saruman goes, ah, <laughs> he's beaten, right? It's kind of what Jesus did, Palm Sunday. He throws off the rags. He goes into Jerusalem like a king of old, like they would in the Old Testament, riding a donkey. Symbolizing, yes, uh, the, the, their humbleness before God, and yet they're the king. They, they, they run into Jerusalem. And the people, they're, they're, they're crying out, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. This is, these, these are messianic greetings. Save now. Only God can save, right? The children are shouting out, and Jesus, he's orchestrated all this, right? I mean, this didn't take him by surprise. He had the two guys go get the donkey. He's orchestrated all of it. He knows what he's doing. And, and, and when the, the scribes and Pharisees say, shh, don't let them call you this. Tell your disciples to be quiet. He said, hey, if they shut up, even the very stones will cry out. I, I got some insight on this when I was in, in Jerusalem. We had a, a Palestinian Christian as a guide. Uh, and, and we were looking, there's this huge burial place. It's above ground in stone boxes, sar sarcophaguses, all right? I'm not sure what the plural is on that. It might be sarcophagi, I don't know. But, uh, but, but it, it, there's this huge burial place, and there was a burial place back then too. And our guide said what he think was going on is that Jesus had just raised Lazarus from the dead, right? And he was saying to these scribes and Pharisees, hey, if you shut these people up, I'm raising them all from the dead, and I'm doing it right now. They're coming out of those stone boxes right now. He was not going to be denied on that day. The robes were coming off. This was the king of kings and lord of lords. He wasn't shutting anybody up. Hosanna to the son of David. This was the one. This was the king of kings and lord of lords. He wants everyone to know. And, and the way he did it, he rides into the midst of the people, the common people, People like me and, and you, he, he, he doesn't go to a palace, right? He doesn't go way up on a hilltop so they have to come search for him. He does it publicly. Right into the middle of the struggle and grittiness of their existence. The greatest city in the nation, he, he rides into the middle of that city. 
like any big city. I mean, it wasn't a place that you might not, that you might want to go, right? He was making a point here for all time that the king of kings is the incarnated one, the one that steps into our life, the one that steps into our world, the one that steps into our midst. He is the one revealed who is Emmanuel, God with us. That's Palm Sunday. But I, I think the thing we forget sometimes is that he was going to the cross. He was riding that donkey to the cross and he knew it. Just a few days later, on what would be Good Friday when he would be nailed to the cross, he knew he was going to God. Put that up for me. He knew that he was going to the cross. When he could have turned away, he embraced the road of suffering. And we see it throughout the text. If you wonder why I added those two little gospel readings, it's so you can see that. His intentionality. In, in, in the first one, he was saying, hey, I, I'm, I'm going up to Jerusalem today, tomorrow, the next day, I'll be in Jerusalem because a prophet is going to die in Jerusalem. He knew it was going to happen, right? Peter tried to turn him away. The son of man must suffer. No, 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 no not you. And he says, get behind me, Satan. In this Palm Sunday text we read, it says he takes the lead to go to Jerusalem. He's leading the way. But he knows what's going to happen there. He knows where the road will lead. Oh, he was the king of kings. He could have gone another way. He could have turned away from that. huh? But he embraces this road of suffering. This was the turning point in his life. What will he do? He embraces the road of suffering. In your, your bulletins, I have a little introductory paragraph and I talk about uh, the, the, the ride of the 600 in the Crimean War, right? They're, they're English cavalrymen and somebody fouls up and they send them to this valley and it's just a place of death, right? And, 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 and I often wonder when they start this ride and they got Canada to the right and Canada to the left and they're thinking, somebody really fouled up here. How many of them wanted to stop and say, whoa, wait a minute, but they didn't. They made the decision to go. And, and in the famous poem it said, and they rode back, but not the 600. It cost him something when they made that decision. It cost Jesus something to go the way of the cross and be forsaken by God in our place. Why would he do that? That's nuts, isn't it? He did it for you. The Bible says, for the joy set before him, he endured the cross. You <laughs> are his joy. To have life with you. To give you life again in him. You see, we, the Bible tells this, this wonderful story that we were created... We were created not, not empty and, and, and frustrated and, and not knowing what direction to go. We, we weren't created in, in, a, in a world that was full of evil and, 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 and full of, uh, of violence and death. We were created in this perfect world to have relationship with him, to live in this perfect relationship of love with him and through him with one another. We've lost all that. We struggle with, with emptiness and guilt we, we, we struggle with the things that we've done, the, 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 the brokenness that we brought into our lives and the brokenness of the world that has touched our lives. Jesus went the way of the cross so that you could have life with him the way it was meant to be. You have that life put back together. Through this thing called forgiveness, our relationship can be made brand new in Jesus. That's really the way it works, right? Have you been, ever been on the outs with somebody? And somebody's gotta say, I forgive you. Somebody's gotta say, I'm sorry. And somebody's gotta say, I forgive you, right? Only with Jesus, he, he said, I forgive you before we could ever say, I'm sorry. Yeah. 
before we could ever receive it, he gave it to us. And, and faith, this thing called faith, is, is a living trust that it's all true for us. Every time we speak these words, every time we talk about this, God's spirit, the, 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 this is the, the Bible's called the sword of the spirit, God's spirit touches our hearts, his spirit communes with our souls, with our spirits, and whispers to our hearts, it's true. The king of all came. He, he could have turned away, but he embraced the road of suffering. This was the turning point, and he did it for you. Right now, God would strengthen this trust in you, and maybe for the first time, birth this trust in you, of this savior who would do this, and yet <laughs> would not lose because on Easter morning, he would rise again as the king of kings. So I, I've got a couple questions for you. Right now, where do you especially need Jesus to show up in your life? He's there. That's the message of Palm Sunday. He steps into uh, the struggles, the dirtiness, the brokenness of our existence. He, um, he takes on our very, our very guilt and death on the cross, and he wins. He is Emmanuel, God with us. Where do you especially need Jesus to show up in your life? Where, where is the emptiness of existence alone making you lonely? Where is the constant struggle wearing you down? Where is the feeling of, of guilt that you'd like to go back and redo that, but you can't, cutting your legs out from underneath you? There's a, a psalm, Psalm 51, after David, uh, David wrote it after he committed uh, adultery and then murder. Uh, and he said, I, I see my sin, I, I, I know my sin. Uh, uh, and I see it so well, he says. And then he says to the Lord, against you, you only have I sinned and done what is evil in your sight. He, he turns to the Lord because finally, every sin we do, every relationship we blow up, every, every broken thing in our world is, a front, is an affront to God. And in Jesus Christ, he, he washes it clean and he gives us a brand new beginning. Where do you need this in your life? Where do you need the savior who bears the mark of the nails to hold you in his hands? To speak to your heart of a peace that goes beyond human understanding. Jesus showed up on Palm Sunday and he's never quit showing up since that moment. Receive him right in that place. Know that he could have turned away, but he chose the way of suffering for you that you might know that he will never, ever, ever turn away from the place you need him. Here's the second question. Where are you called? Where are you given the opportunity to do the same for another? That's the crossroads for us. That's the deciding point. Huh? Who is God putting in your heart and mind right now? Where, where are you called not to turn away from suffering but but to embrace it for the good of another, not for the sake of suffering, but for the good of another. Jesus said, if you want to be my disciple, you've got to deny yourself and take up your cross and follow me. This is not a heavy burden. Another place he said, this is not a heavy burden. This is a new way of life, life the way it was meant to be. Life knowing we have everything in Jesus Christ. 
so that we can live like Jesus Christ. So that we can live for others. Where, where are you especially called to choose the way of suffering for another? Maybe, <laughs> maybe in the closest of your relationships, with your husband or wife or with your children, with your parents, maybe with a neighbor across the street or, or maybe as you see the suffering and lostness in our world, somewhere you're, you're called to help no matter what the cost. You know, I, I was thinking through this um, and, and my, my mind drifted back, it was, it was like dominoes. Uh, uh, when I was in Denver, uh, I had this, when I first came, I had this couple who had adopted this crack baby, and they had adopted this crack baby even though they had been told that when this baby, about puberty, this baby's gonna go all haywire, that it might be all fine, that she might be doing really good, but at puberty, bang, it's gonna hit it because of what she'd gone through is in, in, in utero, right? And, and, and they knew it, they said they, they were told this is 100% certainty, and they adopted her anyway. They were told 100% certainty that you are gonna suffer a whole lot if you do this, and they adopted her anyway. And I got there about the time that everything was hitting the fan. And I remember every single week, we, I, I would counsel them. I, I would sit down with them, and we'd pray, and, we, and I'd have the gal with me too. And, and poor thing, she, she's, she was just off the walls. And, and it was like dominoes. I, I remember another family, he was a police officer, and they, they, they adopted uh, uh, four kids from the same family because, because of the police officer, he found out the parents were, were, uh, were into drugs and they were in jail, and so he, they adopted all four kids. And it completely changed their lives. Completely changed their lives, right? They went the way of suffering, right? They had lots of struggle with those kids, and yet oh, great things happened too. And I remember in Denver, I had a third one. And I don't know if you remember the um, Eastern European uh, uh, children that were up for adoption, that were, they had special needs. It was, on, it was on TV quite a bit. And they adopted one of those, couldn't walk, and had all kinds of emotional needs because of what he'd gone through uh, as, as a youngster, the society didn't care for him and so forth. Chose the way of suffering to love these children. Do you think they ever wish they could go back? No. They found out that Jesus' words were true for them. Go ahead. When we lose our life, we find it. This is not a burden <laughs> when you can turn your way to go the way of suffering for the good of another. This is not a burden. This is walking in the footsteps of Jesus. And when you find your life, when you lose your life in service, an amazing thing happens. You find it. So, this week, where do you need Jesus to especially show up in your life? He's there. Receive by faith this wonderful gift. By the power of the Holy Spirit, do it. He's there for you. And in this turning point of life, when you could turn away rather than embrace the road of suffering, where, where uh, to, to whom you are called to, are you, I'm sorry, where, to whom are you called to be there, to be all in, no matter what the cost, in the name of Jesus for the sake of another? Well, I didn't write that very well, did I? Let me do this again. That's all right, we'll just go on. Okay, good. And in this turning point of life, when you could turn away rather than embrace the road of suffering, where, to whom are you called to be there? To be all in, no matter what the cost, in the name of Jesus, for the sake of another. Does that make sense? All right, next one. Where are you called to be and bring the presence of Jesus, no matter what the cost? By the whole power of the Holy Spirit, do it. When he could have turned away, he embraces the road of suffering for you. And when you lose your life for him, you find it. Amen. Now may the peace of God which pass all understanding keep your hearts and minds in true faith to life never ending. Amen.
We stand and we confess our